Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, doing a movie review this week, and it's a skateboarding action mystery drama that came out on January 14, 1989, which is now celebrating its 30th anniversary as I'm reviewing this, well, <laughs> already, simply called Gleaming the Cube, which the original title was called A Brother's Justice, or it's simply skate or die but they went ahead with this title instead which actually has its own meaning of the word gleaming the cube uh, but according to uh, the character played by Christian Slater you know Brian Kelly it's actually about pushing your limits to the edge yeah that's what he described it so I guess that's just another term for for skateboarding um, Assy has an interesting uh, cast of skateboarders too, including legendary uh, Tony Hawk, along with uh, Ronnie Mullen, uh, Mark uh, Ros Rogowski, uh, Lance Mountain, Mike Valley. They even got um, the lead singer from the Aquabats, uh, named Christian Jacobs, who, believe it or not, if you're familiar with that name, he went on to do that uh, TV show on Nick Jr. called Yo Gabba Gabba. Yeah, never watched that show. I've heard of it, but I'm not interested. <laughs> but hey, you know, I'm, I'm 34 years old now, so. <laughs> Going over 34. Oh, okay. Um, I, I've seen this movie a long time ago on cable. I believe it was on USA Network when they played it, and Fox. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, this is basically what they were going for. A skateboarding uh, movie, but it also deals with the mystery of his brother, who's adopted, and he's being the knees until one night um, he was murdered. Or at this rate, he, it might have been a suicide attempt, well, according to the police. But all he knows is that this was no suicide. Yeah. It was a murder. So anyway, uh, the movie stars Christian Slater, uh, along with Stephen Bayer. Uh, for those who don't know, he went on, he was best known for playing the role of, uh, of Manny Rivera in the film Scarface. Yeah, the remake from 1983 with Al Pacino. Yeah, he also went on to do Breaking Bad. And, and he was known for doing that show called Que Pasa USA. Yeah, it was a Spanish show. But I think that was a show that had Paul Rodriguez in it, the comedian. And yeah, he also did a show called Ray Donovan. Uh, he's a good actor. Uh, Richard Hurd. Um who's been in the, believe it or not, the miniseries V, along with V, The Final Battle. Yeah. So I, I knew I recognized that guy. Uh, Lee Tuan, uh, Mean Long, Art Tadabala, Ed Lauder, who's uh, been known for films such as uh, Mulholland Falls from 1986. Uh, he was also in other movies too, like uh, I think he was in the King Kong remake from 1976. Yes, he was in that. He was also in Raw Deal with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Young Blood, yeah, with Rob Lowe, uh, Patrick Swayze, and Keanu Reeves. A real genius. Um, even Cujo, <laughs> True Romance, also with Christian Slater. Um, Rocketeer, I mean, among others. So, it's been a lot of movies, but he's no longer with us. Uh, he died in 2013. Uh, Nicole Maserio, Peter Kwan, uh, Tony Hawk, of course, I mentioned already. Uh, Christian Jacobs, same here. Uh, and Max uh, Pulich. 
It's written by Michael Tolkien, who I believe went on to do uh, films like The Player, The Rapture, uh, The Haunting, as well as uh, The Burning Season, yeah, with Raw Julia, one of his last films, I think. Uh, Deep Impact, yes, one of the better ones to come out uh, in 1998. Uh, yeah, of the two disaster films, yeah, that and, and Armageddon, focusing more on the meteor. Yeah. He also wrote uh, Deep Cover with Lawrence Fishburne and Jeff Goldblum. And it's directed by Graham Clifford, the Australian director, who actually went on to do the miniseries The Last Dawn. Yeah, by, that was actually uh, based on a novel by... Mario Puzo, known for The Godfather. The movie begins where we meet a young teenager named Brian Kelly, who's played by Christian Slater, who's a high school student uh, living in the city of Orange, yeah, Orange County, California, that is, who's uh, very underachieving. I mean, he's very good at his grades and his reports, but most of the time he just, <laughs> he just doesn't like doing all the homework. So. He is a skateboarder. He hangs out with his best friends, including Buddy, who's played by Tony Hawk, who works as a delivery boy at Pizza Hut. That's why you have the, the Pizza Hut delivery truck going by. <laughs> yeah, which Pizza Hut, of course, was a dine-in restaurant. They're still around in some places. I mean, they're pretty rare. Because most of the time we get Pizza Hut as a delivery place. So that way, once we order our pizza, we pick it up ready to go. <laughs> well, anyway, they go around um, hanging, so anyway, they go hanging around skateboarding, you know, gleaming the cube to certain places that they love to skate. But they get into bigger trouble as uh, Brian and his friends suddenly gets picked up by Detective Al Lucero, who's played by Stephen Bayer. Yeah, he, they wound up in jail and and suddenly gets picked up on bail and, and he actually sends Brian back to his parents which due to his reckless behavior he doesn't get along with them. The only one he could trust is his adoptive Vietnamese brother named Vin who's played by Art uh, Chadabala. Uh, Vin works as a shipping clerk for the Vietnamese Anti-Communist Relief Fund or BACRF for short which is an organization to send medical supplies to Vietnam. But when he discovers that a, a suspicious inaccuracy through the shipping records, uh, he brings it to his boss, Colonel Track. You know, he's wearing a, a Los Angeles uh, Rams uh, cap. You know, he's, he's a big fan of the Rams. <laughs> yeah. But he dismisses it as a clerical error and actually fires Vin when he tries to investigate. Uh, next thing you know, during that night, Vin suddenly sneaks into a Westpac medical supply facility, which is a warehouse that actually has all the shippings for all the medical supplies. What he doesn't know was that all these uh, shippings boxes around are actually filled with, you guessed it, weapons. So now, but well, with the owner of Ed Laurendale, who's played by Richard Hurd, along with uh, Bobby uh, Guyon, who's played by um, Peter Kwan, um, they're interrogated by them, and they actually strangled um, him to death and just hang them up, pretending this is a suicide. So, hoping that they'll set free, knowing that they don't want to get involved in this. So it almost looked like Vin just came to the hotel, you know, which is called um, the Atomic Age Lodge, which here in Anaheim it was called the Cosmic Age Lodge on Harbor Boulevard. That's right across the street from Disneyland. Yeah. So the police make it think this is a suicide for Vin. But after the funeral, uh, Brian finds a list of medical supplies that Vin just found directly through his room. 
um, hoping that this may not be a suicide at all, that it might be a murder, as it turned out. But the uh, medical surprise was written in Vietnamese, so he was trying to look for someone to translate it for the shops. But he countered uh, Bobby Nagai into to, to start uh, following him around. And Brian suddenly sneaks inside the back seat of Nagayan's car, which they witnessed the meeting between the track and Laurendale. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Colonel Track was played by Lee Tron. Yes, I forgot to mention that, sorry. Uh, but that's okay. Um, they demand uh, Nagayan uh, $50,000 uh, and a ticket to Bangkok. But Truckles ensures as Laurendale suddenly kills him. Yeah, which Brian suddenly uh, saw it in his own eyes when he was hidden inside the car. Yeah, they were playing like some Vietnamese uh, <laughs> music. Yeah, this, this was like a, a Vietnamese version of Nowhere to Run and all that. So he saw them in cold blood, and uh, Track suddenly uh, takes uh, the body of. Of Bobby and, and puts it straight into the trunk and then Brian escapes and he tries to warn Lucero as well as the cops that that he found out that yes his brother was actually murdered and then he was also finding out that he spotted the the murder of Bobby that's been hidden in the the trunk unfortunately Lucero didn't believe in uh, Brian's story so that's when um, he begins to investigate uh, later on. Same goes with Brian. But for a while, he, you know, he starts to change his personality. You know, after um, he was actually uh, speaking to his brother uh, through his grave. You know, so now he's becoming more like an actual uh, teenager who's becoming more smarter than ever before. So just so he can make friends with. Uh, uh, Track's daughter named Tina, who's played by uh, Ming Long, uh, which, of course, um, Tina was also uh, Vin's ex girlfriend and a high school student, uh, best friends with. So he was given a makeover, be able to hang out with, with her for a while as they became very close. But part of that was just his way to actually try to investigate something that's involved in track, and um, which he was working with uh, Laurendale about the uh, the social functions at BACRF. When he noticed the connection between them, and this is where where he's trying to follow in his footsteps, trying to do whatever he can. He has his own plan to actually um, use a skateboard and set up a f all these fireworks once he uh, goes inside the warehouse. Yeah, he, he begins to search uh, inside the, the boxes to know that there were weapons inside. And he just uh, tries to... So he just uses the fireworks uh, to distract the, the guards. And they lock him inside the, <laughs> the trailer. He actually lights up by finding a uh, the the lighter that he found inside uh, a Track's uh, office and just uh, light it up on fire through the propane and explodes. So just trying to make it look like you know this was a sweet revenge towards it. So. But then there were bikers who were chasing after um, Brian, and then going all the way down the street, and they were all, and all the bikers were Vietnamese as well, because he was being sent by Laurendale. So now uh, Brian had to talk to Lucero about what was going on, because even though they were still going on the investigation. And as, as far as this is concerned, this is what led to, um, this is when uh, Brian suddenly visits his friend Yabo, 
because when he found out that his skateboard was already messed up, you know, due to the the propane uh, fire, he decided to build a newer and faster skateboard, you know, for Brian, so he, that way, you know, he'll be able to to use it, so that way he can go after uh, Lauren Dill, as well as Track, who at this rate kidnapped um, Tina by going straight into the uh, the police car that he stole. That led to a chase scene, which, which Brian, along with his friends, <laughs> decided to go after. And yes, that's when the buddy brings in the <laughs> the, the the Pizza Hut delivery truck, along with the rest of the skaters. So they actually did their incredible stunts, though. To go after, and of course, um, Brian was actually wearing his uh, protective gear, yeah, even his helmet and all that, and pads. Yeah, you know, so in case you know he doesn't get uh, damaged, because this is going to be the risk he's going to take to actually stop uh, Lauren Dill, who just had a gun held to uh, to Tina, where he's actually going to go all the way up there just right when he was <laughs> hanging on with the um, with a Corvette, which actually features a a stunt man. Uh, who made a cameo named uh, Buddy Joe Hooker. <laughs> so, yeah, he just plays uh, a, the driver. So he just goes around um, trying to go after the uh, the police car. So just when when Lauren Dale finally came, came out, along with Tina, held a gunpoint, um, Brian suddenly uh, actually did his uh, particular stunt by doing that jump, that I think that higher jump through the skateboard, and slams him. And then he slams into the pavement. So, so yeah, he, he actually had a um, a scar onto his uh, cheekbone while he was wearing the helmet. So luckily, yeah, well, he survived. <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, he did um, suffer a uh, a broken arm. So now he's uh, he's in a cast in a wheelchair for a while. So he'll be able to recover. And it's just seeing how Tina's doing so far, and you know, she's doing all right. Now that Tina lost her father, you know, due to that shooting of Lorndale, yeah, because Lorndale shot him, just as uh, Brian uh, crashes down into the house you know, with a skateboard. Yeah. With Lucero joining in because you know, they were both uh, in their team to chase around after Laurenville. But, well, in the end, everything was going great as the movie ends. Such an incredible skateboarding movie filled with some of the greatest stunts that they ever done that's pulled off from real life skateboarders, yeah, which includes Tony Hawk and Rodney Mullen. I'm pretty certain Chris Slater did do uh, some of his stunts, but otherwise he did have a stunt double. But uh, I did love some of his actual moves that he was uh, doing while you know, riding on the skateboard. You know, yeah, he tries to do an ollie, but you know, I guess he couldn't. But he wanted to do um, he wanted to do it. Um, so I could definitely see what he had to practice. Um, I, I love his funny quote um, for the dialogue of, of the movie, such as, which I know you can see that in the trailer too. Uh, I don't know what's worse, uh, getting blown up in nuclear war or having a 7-Eleven in every corner. You know, when he was explaining this to his brother uh, Vin <laughs> inside his room. That's filled with all these uh, skateboard posters around that he hangs around and uh, he was eating a sandwich. and. He was basically started to start over with his conversation with his brother, even though his brother is getting into trouble with um, the supplies that they're sending over there. And then also the fact that he's uh, getting revenge on the guys who killed his brother. So that led to that uh, the stunt that I just mentioned uh, at the end of the movie, where you get to see Tony Hawk riding on the Pizza Hut delivery truck along with uh, 
the skating buddies. And I, I love that skateboard uh, that they built uh, you know, by his friend uh, Yahoo. And yeah, when he goes inside the, the tunnel of his place, I mean, that's really cool. So they actually had to use uh, those black uh, skateboard wheels and <laughs> and some heavy metal um, board that they used to put together. So it looks really cool, especially when he did that stunt. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in a way, he does change his personality, trying to follow in his brother's footsteps, getting to know uh, Tina. So they hang around until he starts to search some clues involving um, the death of his brother you know, through tr Colonel Track and who actually worked with Lauren Dale and Bobby and and of course you know the fact that he had to set up um, try to set up something to, to find out that you know they did all this. Yeah. So, again, incredible movie. Now, the movie was not a hit at the box office. Uh, only made over two million dollars out of its ten million budget. The film was released by 20th Century Fox, which is now owned by Disney. As I'm reviewing this, yeah, they finalized the deal. <laughs> well, this is the first. Uh, but it's also co-produced with Gladden Entertainment, the same production company that gave us Wisdom, Mannequin Movies, uh, Manhattan Project, even the original Weekend of Bernie's come to mind. Um, which I guess at that point on, the Live Entertainment or Vestron must have had a deal with, or, or even HBO for that matter, must have had a deal with Gladden Entertainment. Uh, with their libraries, so that's why they weren't released by you know, Fox themselves. Which I think MGM got the rights to them. I don't even know if MGM has the rights to this movie, you know, but because I haven't seen a a new uh, Blu-ray release from them. I hope it gets one because the DVD is out of print. That was released by Artisan Entertainment through uh, Pioneer. And they're going for higher prices nowadays, unless you have to end up finding it at your local Goodwill or thrift store. Take your pick. Uh, but I was actually lucky enough to find a copy online on, that's an H, that I actually converted to HD. It's only 100 minutes because you could tell this was directly from a UK print because it was released by Rank. Yeah, the one with the, uh, the guy with the gong. <laughs> You know that one. It was a very, very famous logo in in the UK. So they released the movie, but here it's 20th Century Fox. Um, yeah, and critics uh, critically panned this movie completely. I'm sorry, again, I always say this many times, even in my videos. I don't agree with them. Sometimes I do, but not very often. But hey, you know, I, I do love Cisco and Ebert, though. Okay, and, and I I don't mind uh, James uh, Bernard Arelli. But, whatever. <laughs> but, um, either way, um, I enjoy the movie. And I hope, and I'm glad to see that it got a cult following over the years. Aired on TV and cable. And the fact that it, it gears towards uh, skateboarding fans out there you know, who loves to skateboard and do all these tricks. So, I'm glad they, they do so. And also, this was Christian Slater's uh, favorite film. And Matt, in fact, he even did an interview with Tony Hawk a long time ago. And they even explained how they did it. <laughs> so that's really cool. You know, he got in touch with uh, Tony. Because even he did his own stunts, too, uh, along with Rodney Moulin and all the rest. And and then you got Christian Jacobs, too. Uh, it has a good soundtrack, too, uh, a lot of good songs. Um, not a bad cast. 
Uh, there's even times when it tries to. Uh, there's even scenes where you know Brian was trying to connect with uh, his parents, you know, because they weren't getting along, and suddenly he learned something there. And he's changing his ways, you know, despite the fact that he's actually trying to investigate what's going on. And of course, you know, Detective Al Lucero always flicking his ears every time he, he appears, especially when <laughs> he goes around investigating other places, including the Bobby's apartment that's filled with uh, Bikini Girl posters around. And, or having to go around Orange County, which, yeah, this is where it's getting chased by Bobby uh, while he's riding on the skateboard. So, yeah, a lot of that. <laughs> and, yeah, and they shot this in Orange County anyway. I mean, through all the, the cities of Irvine and you know, Los Angeles, uh, Anaheim. I mean, you can even see it. Tito's Tacos in one scene. That's still around, by the way. And you see all these other uh, places, too. I, I know I mentioned Pizza Hut, of course, the dining restaurant, everything. And they, they shot in San Pedro and all these other uh, uh, freeway streets around. Because that was also familiar, too, because I've been to Irvine uh, when I was going to that uh, the screening event uh, when I was working in Inclusion Films a long time ago. So I actually uh, recognize uh, a lot of places, and it's really cool that this movie was set in the OC. Definitely the perfect uh, OC film and skateboarding. Movie. So anyway, that's um, Leave Me the Cube, and I give it four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.